Everybody, welcome to System Crafters Live. I'm David Wilson, and we're back again this week with a live stream where we get together as a community and discuss whatever interesting topic I've come up with. And this week is no different. Um, we did not get to meet last week because I had some deadlines that I had to deal with at work and also, you know, personal responsibilities. So uh, sorry about that. But to this week, we're back. We're, we're going to get back to our uh, regularly scheduled programming. You see me laughing here because, like, Things are acting a little bit strange on the streaming machine right now. For some reason, things are just like really jerky. And I tried to do my little intro transition where it fades the music out and it just like hanged there for four seconds before it did anything. So uh, yeah, really interesting to see that happening right now. Um, I'd like to say hello to the people who have uh, gotten here so far. Uh, the Foss Enjoyer, uh, Gun, Geo, uh, Camello. Thank you so much. Geo says, uh, well done on the 10, 10 Geeks Year's anniversary. Yes, well, that, I really enjoyed that, uh, that that meetup. I guess you can't really call it a conference, but it was a meetup. Uh, you know, it was, it was a nice little event. I really enjoyed that. That's great. Hello to Dex, uh, Dexplorer. Hello to Mark Owen. So, um, let's see. Anything interesting right off the top of my head? Not really. I've been kind of like out of um, Emacs space a little bit recently, just because I've been so focused on something else, which I'll tell you, tell you about in a minute. But, you know, I, I'm using Emacs. I'm just not, like, you know, thinking about configuration. So uh, it's been a little bit harder to think of things to do. But uh, this week, actually, we managed to sort of become aware of something just today that we're going to look into in the stream. But before we get into that, let's just talk about the, the updates. So um, I think it was maybe two weekends ago now, I had a, a really good time uh, working on a game entry for the Ludum Dare 51, or Ludum Dare, whatever it is. <laughs> I need to get that, that uh, figured out. Um, but anyway, that's a basically a game development competition where you have a weekend to make a game, or I guess the one that I did is basically a weekend. You make a game by yourself, and I used the language that I've been working on called Mesh uh, to do that. And we did make quite a lot of progress. Uh, we were working on a dungeon crawler game where basically you, you have a pre predefined map layout, but uh, anything that's on the map that you have to deal with, it, its position randomly changes every 10 seconds. So uh, if you're interested in game development or just you know lisp coding or scheme coding in general, check out the playlist of the streams from that weekend because I've basically all the development I did on the game, I documented it in streams. Uh, that was a lot of fun, and I'm definitely going to do the next one. So probably, you know, first half of next year, there'll be another uh, Let Em Dare. There may be some other game jams I'll end up doing in the very near future as well, and uh, I'll keep you posted on that, but uh, I'll always be doing those things on the Flux Harmonic channel. So subscribe to that channel if you're interested in that type of thing. Uh, also, uh, the thing that I mentioned before that I've been working on is uh, Mesh. Uh, I've been sp sp spending a lot of my free time on that in the last couple weeks, maybe the last three weeks, I guess. Um, I did manage to get uh, delimited continuations implemented, which is pretty interesting for uh, control flow. And I'm currently working on implementing hygienic macros. So uh, that basically necessitated the complete rewrite of the parser to implement a proper reader. If you are familiar with, you know, Lisp or scheme implementations, the reader is basically the parser of uh, Lisp style data hmm syntax, I guess you could say. The S expressions where you have parentheses and then stuff inside of it. Uh, so I, I rewrote all of that and now I'm to the point now where I can start trying to implement hygienic macros, which is a whole other um, beast in itself. But I'm very excited about it because I think it's going to make uh, the language a lot more fun to use, at least for me anyway. As I'm, I'm primarily, primarily doing this for me 
Uh, I don't think anybody else is going to use it, but it's just fun for me. At some point, I'll be doing more videos about that on the channel, but I need to learn how all this stuff works first before I can try to explain it to someone else. Uh, but maybe, you know, people will get something out of it. We'll see how that goes. Um, and lastly, I just want to uh, bring up once again that uh, uh, Mickey Peterson, the author of the book Mastering Emacs, has done a really nice thing to help support the channel. He's provided me with an affiliate link such that if you were to uh, purchase a copy of Mastering Emacs using this link with the uh, slash r slash system crafters at the end, a portion of the sale will go to supporting the channel. And uh, many of you have done that already, and I'm really, really thankful to those of you who have. Uh, it's uh, really nice to see people, you know, checking out the book. Uh, it's a great resource if you have not uh, checked it out yet. It goes into depth on a lot of areas uh, about Emacs that I haven't gotten into on the channel. So if you want to get really uh, deep into your knowledge on Emacs, definitely check out uh, Mastering Emacs. Uh, well worth the, the read. I bought the book probably in 2017 or 2018, uh, and it was really helpful for me back then. So I, I imagine it's still just as helpful, if not more helpful by now. Uh, the, the other nice thing is that Mickey updates the book for every major Emacs release. So uh, there's another really good reason to, to get a copy of that because it will be updated for free every time there's a new Emacs. Speaking of Emacs, one thing that I did not actually write down yet uh, in the updates, but is quite important is, uh, I will mention that, Jeff, yes, uh, is that in Geeks, within the last two or three weeks, there's been an update to the, uh, the Emacs package where it might actually be using um, native compilation of Emacs list modules by default. I need to check on that because I'm not exactly sure if it is by default. Let me check my current uh, poll here. I think I, I have the latest package information. So let's pull up uh, the Emacs package in the Geeks interface in Emacs. All right, so the Emacs package here, native? No, okay, so just Emacs. Let's see what Emacs says. I'm gonna open this up and see if, okay, so it's by default. Now with native compilation is turned on by default in Geeks, which means that you no longer have to compile Emacs from scratch anymore to get native compilation of uh, Elisp modules. Now, whenever you download the substitute of Emacs from the Geek CI servers, in theory, uh, that should just be uh, the one that has native compilation built in. So much easier now to use the much faster version of Emacs with the native compilation functionality turned on, which I think is a great improvement to have. It's been quite stable. So there's really no concern in my mind for using it. The only thing that's a little bit annoying about it sometimes is that Whenever you update all your packages in Emacs, the first time you start up Emacs after that is super slow because it is like doing background recompilation of all of um, your existing packages. And you would think, oh, okay, it's it's asynchronous. Why is it bothering Emacs? It's because it's chewing up all your CPU because it's got like 15 different instances of Emacs compiling packages to native code at the same time. So that could be a little bit annoying, but uh, well worth it for the benefit in performance, I think. Uh, I just wanted to point that out to people though, because it's a pretty big improvement in my mind. Now you no longer have to use a source like the Flat Watson repository, which requires building Emacs every time you want to update it. Also keeping up to date with whatever changes are being made to the Flat Watson repo, because at least for me, I'm pending all of my um, my channel repositories. So I have to like kind of check every now and then, make sure there haven't been any new commits to it, et cetera. It's kind of a headache. So uh, glad that I don't have to do that anymore. But thank you very much to uh, Flat Watson for having shepherded along this process of having a package or a channel where you can install the build of Emacs with uh, native compilation turned on because I've been enjoying it for probably a year now, I think. Um, and it's uh, cool to see that it finally got um, upgraded to a you know, standard feature in the Geeks package for Emacs. So enough rambling about that. Uh, hello to Jeff and to Daigo and MaxRev, the Synchro. Uh, Dexplorer says, do you know of an interplanetary file system integration for Emacs? I do not. Um, and I don't know much about IPFS aside from the fact that it's just, you know, like a peer-to-peer -peer file sharing type thing, right? Uh, Jeff says, and there's a mastering Emacs module with Crafted Emacs. Yes, that's true. So in the last stream, I mentioned that... Um, that uh, Jeff had just contributed a new module to Crafted Emacs. If you don't know about Crafted Emacs, 
It's the uh, Emacs configuration that we've put together, which is sort of more like a starter config. It's not really meant to be like a full, you know, solves all your problems configuration. But uh, Jeff just put together a module that uses some of the stuff that's mentioned in the book, Mastering Emacs, in case you wanted to try some of those things out. So it's an easy way to, to get started, uh, taking a look at some of those improvements that are mentioned in the book, which I think is pretty cool. Thanks a lot, Jeff, for doing that. Uh, hello to Hunter Jaws. Um, the Foss Enjoyer says, always wanted to ask what's the theme that David's using. That is the Doom Pale Knight theme that comes with Doom themes. If you install the Doom themes package, uh, consult theme, you'll see that I'm using this Doom Pale Knight package. So that's the one that I use. Hey, Emmanuel. Uh, nothing so far, just me rambling about the uh, Emacs uh, package in Geeks. Okay, so let's see. What was the next thing I wanted to talk about? I think that's it for updates for the week. So let me just um, say that uh, the Emacs, Emacs package in Geeks now has with, wait a second, <laughs> with native compilation turned on by default. Why did this stop highlighting all of a sudden? What did I do wrong? Ah, there it is. Cool. Let me just move that up one. Great. Okay, so today what we're going to try to do is uh, we're going to try to get a pre-built program running in Geeks. And when I say pre-built, what I mean is that um, some producer of a piece of software has compiled a program, the program, and has distributed distributed it <laughs> distributed it on their website or somewhere where you can download it and try to use it. Um, in Geeks, this is often a problem because the way that most programs are, are built before they're distributed is, you know, someone has got like an Ubuntu or a uh, Fedora or some other sort of mainstream Linux distribution where they, or De Debian, um, mainstream Linux distribution where they built a program and once you build a piece of software, at least on Linux and other platforms as well, some assumptions are kind of baked into that program, like where certain dynamic libraries might be found or certain file system paths, things like that. Um, oftentimes it's very difficult to download a piece of software like that and run it on Geeks because Geeks does not have um, a standard location for the, um, the Linux uh, module loader path. I'm not sure if I'm using the right terminology there, but it's basically the the thing that uh, Linux uses whenever you st whenever you start a program to decide how to load up all the dynamic libraries that are necessary to start the program. Um, the path to that code is usually hard coded to a standard location on most Linux distributions, but Geeks does not have that. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is sometimes these um, programs are looking for things in like the slash user slash lib folder or the slash bin folder or various sort of hard-coded paths or standard paths like that. Um, so because of that, you can't just download any random program off the internet and try to run it on Geeks. It takes a, a lot of extra effort uh, most times. And usually people just try to build the software from scratch in Geeks using the Geeks build system. Uh, but today there was an announcement on the Geeks HPC Twitter account, which is sort of like the Twitter presence for the Geeks project because there's not like an official GNU Geeks uh, Twitter account. Um, which basically said that they've got a new feature for the Geeks shell command, which makes it possible to emulate the standard uh, Linux standard base or FHS, is that file system hierarchy standard maybe is what it's called, um, in a Geeks shell container. So what that means is that uh, it creates all these folders like slash bin or slash user, um, what like what a program might expect to see on a standard Linux distribution like Debian or Ubuntu, etc. Uh, so that programs might have a better chance of running inside of Geeks. And the added benefit there is that you're running it inside of a container environment in Geeks and not just running it on your Bayer configuration. So um, since this is something that just got mentioned, how many hours ago was this? Uh, probably... Oh, it was, it was yesterday. Okay. So anyway, it was about a day ago they mentioned it. I just saw it today. But um, it's a fairly new feature, apparently. We're going to try it out. We're going to see if we can actually get a program running inside of that, which should be pretty fun. So what we're going to do is try to run a program like, let's say, Discord. We're going to download Discord as it is distributed on their website and try to see if we can get it running in a Geeks container. 
Uh, obviously, the first thing we got to do is just download it. Uh, they have a .tar.gz build of it, which is basically just, you know, if you unpack it and run it, in theory, it should work. I don't know if it has like an installer script or something. Haven't tried it yet. We'll, we'll take a look at that. Then we're going to start up Geek Shell uh, with this new emulate FHS parameter, which is a thing that's important for emulating this uh, file system hierarchy that is found in standard Linux distributions. And then we're going to try to run the program, see what goes wrong, see what dependencies we're missing, and then gradually try to get it working. It may not work. I'm not sure whether it's going to work yet or not, but I think it has a greater chance of working now than we had in the past when we did not have this emulate FHS parameter. Um, if it turns out to be completely impossible to get Discord to run because it may have a million dependencies, uh, then we might try to jump to some other program, maybe a simpler program that's not based on Electron with a bunch of other random stuff built in. So uh, we'll give it a shot and see how it goes. And if people have uh, suggestions for other programs to try that aren't so complicated, then I would certainly be interested to hear them in the chat. And uh, we can try those later if this doesn't work out. Um, we also might have to try to use uh, Patch Elf or some other similar program to massage the executable a little bit to make it work right. But in theory, it shouldn't be necessary in this new way of running things. So I'm hoping it won't be necessary. All right, I'm going to grab a little drink of water and then we'll get started with it. I also want to point out that this um, new parameter is currently documented in the development version of the Geeks docs. So if you want to check that out, uh, you can hop on over to this link that I have in the show notes, which is in the description below. And uh, emulate FHS is here. So it, it sort of explains a little bit what it does. The important thing being that it's going to uh, put uh, the LD so caching in the right place and also set up the expected folder structure. So that's uh, that's the important thing here. All right, so let's get it going. I'll jump into a V term, and then uh, we don't really need to start it, start that up just yet. First, let's download Discord. So Discord.com, get that .conf. Yeah, that doesn't work. And uh, it gives me a download for Linux. I'll click on that, and then it has this uh, whoops, this tar.gz file here. And the reason why I'm installing some proprietary software is because often this is the kind of software you have trouble with in Geeks um, because, you know, open source software, usually either there's a package for it in, uh, in Geeks, if it's not too overly complicated to build, or there's a flat pack for it, or you could build it yourself. So like there's other ways to get access to things, but usually with like a, a proprietary program, like let's say Discord or Slack or anything else like that, it's harder to to run it. So that's why we're gonna try to do it this way. So let's jump over to uh, downloads. I'm gonna try to extract, uh, where is it, uh, Discord? Hello? I bet it went into a weird file, file path. Let's see, ls, uh, oh, actually no. Where would it have gone? save as come here there we are yeah that's not where i want that to go is this seriously 0020 that just does not does not sound right or snap yes well snap doesn't really work on um geeks i think so let's drop this in the downloads folder this is probably just a like a bootstrapper for installing all the other crap at discord needs to put in okay so now it should be here so uh tar zxvf discord okay so it has some stuff in here cd discord seems not too bad okay so we've got it now we've got it uh pulled in here and what we're gonna do is run geeks shell container um what was the parameter for that uh emulate fhs now, this is going to be, be, well, let's also do, do I want to do pure on this? Maybe let's not do pure. Probably don't need to. Container might just do pure by default. We'll see, see how long this takes. Also, what we want to do is uh, figure out which packages we need to install and create a manifest file for it, which won't be too hard once we start checking things out. Um, whoops, LSAL. 
Ah, okay. I need core utils, first of all. So let's go ahead and get our little manifest file started up here. Um, well, geeks.scm, let's do that. And I need to find another manifest file in one of my projects. So let's go to, uh, let's go to the LD51 thing that we were working on before. Let's just grab this whole thing and then go back to geeks.scm. Geeks.scm is kind of like a, um, standard uh, file name for um, the manifest to be used for Geek Shell. So it should pick this up by default, I think. So uh, I think we need core, core utils to start with. I'm not gonna bother with uh, some of these things. No no package config, uh, no GDB, no CMake, Zlib. Zlib may be necessary, but let's not put that in. We're gonna start from scratch, scratch and see if we can really get to um, the specific things we need. We'll take these things out. I'm going to comment these out just so that I remember them in case we do need them. Leave those out. Probably going to need some of these things, uh, but we'll get to that. I'll comment those out too. Hey, why did it eat my parentheses? There we go. So what else was there? There's something else I think that I needed to pull in for this, but let's start with this and see what happens. At least with, oh, I want to pull in, what is it, um, LLD? I know I, no, no, not LLD, it's LDD, L, oh, LDD. What package is that part of? LDD is kind of necessary because we're gonna need it for looking at the list of dependencies of the binary. And I wanna make sure, <clears throat> excuse me, make sure I have the right program for that. Uh, dot files, uh, dot config, geeks, manifests, code. It's not LLD. Is it elf utils? Elf utils? Maybe. LDD is included in glibc. Thank you. That's probably right. So let's, let's jump back to this and let's put glibc. Make sure that's, the, yeah, glibc. Cool. All right. So we're going to go back into our V term and then we're going to try this one more time. Let's try it see if it pulls up the geeks.scm. No, nah, it didn't seem to. Okay, fine. So we'll pull in then uh, manifest geeks.scm. What? Is it just geeks.s? No, no, hold on. Something's wrong. I use this all the time and I'm having problems now. Uh, pure, dash M, okay, fine. Let's give it a shot here and see what happens. Geeks at SCM, dude, where is it? Ah, uh, you know what? V term, I don't have it set up right, so it puts things in a very weird location. So this put this in <laughs> the uh, live stream content folder. So we're gonna just uh, copy this and then head by back over to, hello. Uh, downloads, uh, Discord, 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 thank you. Okay, so geeks.scm, I think I screwed up my copy of the other one, so let's do that. Drop that in. Now I shouldn't need the uh, manifest parameter. I think I should pick it up automatically. Nope, fine, are you happy now? Install something. There you go. Finally. Okay. So now LDD. Cool. We have it. So uh, we have Discord, the application right here. So LDD Discord. All right. So a lot of stuff here that's not installed. So all these things that say you're not found, we have to uh, install packages that hopefully have these. So we're going to go more or less one by one and try to put them in. So NSS, I think that might be related to some of the, um, well, I'm not actually sure. I've seen that before. We'll see. So let's start at the top. G object and G lib, probably G lib itself. Yeah. G lib itself is probably enough for that. I think that's the Gaia libraries, isn't it? G lib. Yeah. Low level core library for Gorn for GNOME projects. Also, there's a lib GCCS, so we might need um, GCC. 
that's not libgcc jet gcc we could just install gcc and see what happens but it might be the whole tool chain there's a gcc lib here so that might be enough um let's try this let's do a couple things gcc lib we'll try to pull the lib um well i don't remember what this is called output the lib output of gcc also try glib so we're gonna try just those two and see if it resolves like glib g object uh geo let's see is there geo I think Geo may also be a part of uh, Glib, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Tomas says uh, MOS or NSS is some name resolution thing for NFS, maybe. All right, so jump back out, run it again so we can install the new packages we added to the manifest, and then we'll run uh, LDD again to see what we got. Some of these things may take a little while to install, unfortunately, but we'll deal with it. The new PG, interesting. So the name of the game here is just figuring out which packages have the dependencies we need. And then just, you know, experimenting until we get uh, all the dependencies loaded up. Even if we do get all the dependencies loaded, we may end up with uh, issues with uh, version dependency problems. Uh, I'm trying to scroll and it's not letting me. Okay. So for instance, the libgcc, yeah, well, it doesn't say which version it is. That's okay, we'll figure it out. So now, um, LDD Discord. So we don't have GCC. One thing I do notice here is we do have the lib64 LD Linux uh, SO whatever file, which is definitely necessary for starting the app, but we, we're missing um, other things we need. So even gobject and glib did not pop up here. Did I put the right version? glib, that's version two. Interesting. I wonder why it's not finding that. So LDD, is there like a verbose or something? I'm sorry, uh, help. Verbose, okay, so LDD verbose. I want to see what load path is looking at. Lib FFmpeg. Got a lot of output here. Uh, Gavin says, is this just for using Geek System or just a package manager? It's, this is for the package manager uh, primarily because it's using uh, Geek's shell. All right, so we got lib pthread, that's nice. That's coming from lib glibc. So um, NSS, network security services, lib NSS, is there anything different? We can try to put NSS in here. What else we got? Um, FFmpeg, we have just the out, so I don't know if that's gonna be enough, FFmpeg. Let's see, echo uh, LD library path. Is that here? Library path, no. We're just a uh, plain old library path, yeah. Okay, so let's LS that path. All right, so, oh, libnss is seemingly already there. What else is here? So some of the things it's looking for seem to be here. I don't know why they're not getting loaded up. Paul says, can we check under GNU store to see if the libs are present? Yeah, well, it seems like some of them are present, which is what's interesting to me. In the profile slash lib. And under, under library path, which should be getting picked up by the loader, I think. So what else are we missing that seems to be here? Discord already has uh, FFmpeg in this folder, does it? Let's see. You're right, it does. I wonder if having it there causes problems. Like if I were to delete those. Discord might not be the best thing to try, but we're trying it just as a way to uh, validate whether this is gonna work sort of out of the box or if we need more uh, help. 
uh, GTK3. Let's see. All right, so we got GTK4. Mm. GTK, is there a three? No, that might be a problem. So let's uh, let's try this. We added a few things. Let's see if uh, any of them show up. Might take a minute for it to install this stuff. So Hugo says, uh, maybe you need to set LED library path the same value as L library path. You might be right. So we will give that a shot uh, in a second. Yes, that's actually true. Because LD library path is what's uh, gonna override the path for the loader. Library path, I think, is just for the compiler, right? So that's a good point. We should just set those at the same. And see what happens. Because it, it does, does seem like a lot of those libraries are already there, so. I wonder if the GTK version is going to be a problem, though. Because it looks like it's looking for GTK 3. GTK. Uh, Xir says, I think they packaged a, G a GTK3. I thought so too. So let me go look at that. Um, we're going to go look in the GTK file here. There should be another package. Find public GTK. So GTK. There's a GTK plus dash plus dash two. What is this GTK three? Okay, so GTK plus three point two point uh, three point two four. Man, again with a spam. I'll tell you what. The spam issue on YouTube is starting to get out of control. Every stream that I do now, there's just chat spam. Every video that I publish, there's spam after the fact. It's really annoying. Okay, so GTK Plus is probably the right thing uh, based on what Zero said. And I lost all that because of the, uh, the lovely spam chat. Okay, so let's jump back out. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to jump out. We're going to... Wait, we just did that. Okay, whatever, it's fine. It's cache environment, we don't have to reinstall it. I'm gonna run LDD again. Come on, come on, there we go. LDD Discord. Uh, probably not gonna find, <coughs> excuse me, find things yet, but, oh, uh, oh, okay. It found its lib FF impact on its own. Other things are still not being found. So here's what we'll do. We're gonna um, export uh, LD library path equal to library path. Not a valid identifier. Oh, my mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll get it right. Uh, ah. There we go, finally. All right, so uh, echo LD library path. Fine. Now, let's do LDD again to see if anything shows up. Whoa, look at all that. Okay, so we got a few things that are resolved. In fact, we got quite a lot of things that are resolved. The only thing right now is this A sound cups, ATSPI. I have no idea what that is. And uh, we are missing uh, GTK3. So we did manage to, to get a lot of them hold up uh, and that seems to be the, the trick so let me jump back to the show notes uh, let's see notes so um, things we needed to do so we can just say export to LD library path and what was the syntax I used for that was it equal or just export okay equal equal Oh, come on. I have to put an equal there. Whatever. 
I don't know how to escape that um, in org mode. Okay, good enough. So we had to do that for sure. Let's go back to our uh, geeks.scm file. Okay. So let's try GTK Plus instead, because that might be the thing that helps us. Uh, also, what was the other one that we had? A sound, A sound. Whoa, no. A sound. Hmm. Lib A sound. Where's that come from? Maybe it's in the Alsa. It keeps uh, helpfully pre-populating. Alsa lib. Probably in this, right? Probably also, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, let's give this a shot then. Also lib. All right, so that's that one. What about the others? Cups. Like we really need printing in Discord. I guess it's just an electron thing. Cups. They have a lib output. Um, no, but we'll pull it in anyway. How about this? Cups. Can't use tilde for code code block so it doesn't clash with the equal sign. Uh, good point, actually. Let's, let's go do that. I'm so, you know, trained to use equal sign that I make a mistake with that. Okay, here we go. There we go. That's much better. Okay, and then... ATSPI. So there's a Python ATSPI. So there must be a dependency that pulls that in or not. ATSPI on Dbus. Okay, what is ATSPI? Assistive technology. Okay, so ATK. Thank you very much. Let's take a look. ATK. There it is. Gnome Accessibility Toolkit. Okay, so let's throw that one in. Then we're gonna go ahead and just try what we got uh, so far and see how much farther we get with it. So let's jump back out of the uh, environment and then we're gonna run it again. Boats are optional, thank you. I think we're making progress. It may not end up running in the end, but uh, we're getting closer, I think. The interesting thing would be if you could actually package up an application with such a, not a container environment, but with this sort of virtual folders necessary to run the application correctly. If you could do that instead of having to do like patch elf and other weird things, it might be easier to package some of these uh, pre-built apps. Okay, so um, we need to do our export deal again. So export. Uh, LD library path equals uh, LD, I'm sorry, library path. Maybe there's a way I can just sort of automate that in the shell. Um, LDD discord. Okay, so let's see if we got some things this time. Looking good. I see AT sound, I see AT SPI, I see cups. Okay, so we got a couple things here. That may be it. Wow. Okay. So NSS, NSS util, and S mime. S ah, S mime. Hmm. It's probably in some other library. Uh, what was the other thing? Uh, NSS, right? So NSS. Wow. Stop being helpful. Probably just NSS, right? Let's just say NSS. Um. So let's see what else. S mime. Well, let's look at uh, mime. G mime, K mime. I mean, I wonder if G mime could have some hooks into something that might be useful for this. Or I can search online for lib s mime and see if I can figure out what it's part of. Ah, okay, so uh, Rifu says uh, SMIME is part of NSS 3.2, as far as I know. Uh, Hugo says, you already had NSS, so we need to figure it out still. Yeah, that's a good point. 
Yep. All right. Oh, I do have NSS in the manifest. Great. So a few things that should be there in NSS are not working, it seems. Got to load that up. Okay. Lib NSS3 is related to that. Yeah. Okay. So lib NSS3. So what's wrong? NSS. Let's uh, do uh, this thing here, right? I don't think we need that, but we can put it in anyway. Because it won't be able to connect to anything online otherwise. Uh, let's see. Max says, I wonder if uh, Geeks Package Manager has a command to resolve a file back to the package that contains it. Maybe. I don't know. It would be nice if it did, actually. Maybe someone else knows about that. All right, so let's take those out. We didn't seem to need uh, free type, which is interesting. Okay. Let's run it again. I don't remember what changes I made to it aside from removing stuff, so. Oh, NSS certs. Probably not good enough. Uh, we'll also check the lib folder and see if anything there looks right. Sort of says, I, I literally just came across your Emacs video for beginners. Turns out you are live. I come from using Vim for a couple of years. Do you recommend Space Max or Custom? Well, if you're coming from Vim, I recommend you use uh, Doom Emacs because it's probably farther along than Space Max in some regard. But Space Max is also good. So it's, there's no problem using that. All right. So once again, export LD library path equals uh, library path. And then LDD Discord. Let's jump all the way back up here. All right. You know what? I'm going to try to run it anyway and see what happens. Okay. So it's still complaining about libnss3. Um, let's see. LS lib. How about I do... Okay. So there is no libnss. Is there? Oh, libnss. N S S um hmm interesting. So there is no lib N S S three. Geeks uh, lib N S S three. How about that? Let's see. Okay. Oh yeah, the paste was gone by now. All right. How about this? Patch reference to lib NSS. That doesn't sound good. Lib NSS lib SSL three. Hmm. Hey, Russ's love. Ah, yeah. Okay, so uh, lib NSS, I think it's a, a different difference in path, slash lib slash NSS, oops. NSS dev, yeah, so it's probably that lib SSL three. Oh no, it's here, lib NSS three. Okay, interesting. So what if I do this then? Uh, can I fix? the library path by also adding slash lib slash NSS. Is that going to be enough? LDD discord. Let's see. Oh, I think we found it. So let's, let's see what happens. Does this core actually launch? Segmentation fault. Cannot exec uh, gzip. Okay, that's fine. It's probably ex uh, unpacking some stuff internally. So how about gzip? Is that enough? Gzip? Yeah, okay. Cool, we're making progress. I like that. I don't like what we had to do though, because it's not sort of just like out of the box, but if we know what it is. So what Rostislav said uh, was to add a bash RC. 
Geeks shall share equals, ah, I haven't seen that parameter before. That's cool. Interesting. Okay, we could try that, um, but we'll skip it for now. I know it's a little bit annoying to have to type it in again, but uh, let's just go on with this for now. So I'm gonna put, um, I'm, I'll fix this thing that we've got here. I'll also add colon slash um, lib slash NSS. I'll just copy this over. Kark says, will this come out as a separate video because I'm interested in running binaries on geeks? Maybe, I don't know. This kind of thing really needs videos about it for sure. Okay, so we got uh, gzip in there now. Let's run this again. Then I can run our export command. I think if I were to, well, okay. Nah, let's not do that right now. Okay, so now if I were to run this and then Discord. Uh, oh, okay, once wget, that's fine. Now we're gonna find all of the uh, programs it needs to shut off to <laughs> before we can get anywhere. Okay, so uh, wget. So let's, let's move gzip down here also. Hey, you can move it, there you go. Uh, program dependencies. Library dependencies. Hey. How'd I do that? Okay. So uh, we got wget in there now. Let's back out and then run it again. And then I can paste it. Uh, paste the export command. Come on, let's go. Here we are. Nope. Uh, let me go back and grab that one more time. Now it's a liability to have a tilde at the end. <laughs> or at the front. All right, we're just gonna take those off because they're just causing problems. All right, there we go. Now, Discord. Do it. Okay. Unexpected crash report ID linked failed to get crash dump ID. Is it crashed for some reason? Probably some kind of um, library version problem. Probably some uh, mismatch. And uh, this may be the point where we have to consult with GDB, which I don't really want to do because it seems like going a little bit too far. But just for the sake of our curiosity, uh, let's let's just see. Debugging tools. We'll take, uh, what was it, glibc. Wrap this here, throw in GDB also. Now let's see what happens. Also, I'll go back and grab that. Mas says I should automate this so that I don't have to keep doing it. Yeah, I agree. Better cross reference of dependencies from OR and FlatHub? Maybe. Just Google for the error message? Well, there is no real error message here. Um, because it could be anything, really. It's just got a segmentation fault. Here we are. Paste that. Uh, GDB Discord. All right. Run. Uh, okay. Don't have symbols, so but it is somewhere maybe in pthread or is it just a thread that uh, was running and then failed? Okay, that's not it. related. Yes, it is a new feature. The emulate dash FS FHS definitely new feature. Um, auto loading has been declined by your auto load safe path. Probably I need to do something to make this, uh, all the symbols and stuff pop up. But since this is, this is a, an application that is, uh, come on now. It's an application that is, uh, distributed. Then symbols are not part of it. Okay. So I, we may have hit a dead end here. I mean, I don't, I don't want to give up that easy, but. 
uh, it might be difficult to figure out what's going on. I'll try one more time to run it. There's no real... Um... Oh, the Utex facility returned an uh, unexpected error code. What exactly does that mean? Stop. Here we go. Must be something related to mutexes, if I'm right. Discord. S trace to see if it failed to read some file. That's a good idea, actually. Discord doesn't run. Hmm. Ah, useless. Oh, it's on a Chromebook. Okay. Well, can't do much there. So S trace. I'm not familiar with using S trace. I know it's it's very useful for this kind of thing. But, uh, well, we'll just try it out and see. So let's uh, pull in S trace as part of the profile, the manifest. Jump out of here, back in. See how long it takes. All right. Uh, Humanly Types asking about my theme. Uh, probably part of the effect that you're seeing here is that, that I have a particular back, background and Emacs has a translucency. It makes it look a lot different. Thanks, Lior. Okay, so now we will have to do our little pasty again. Um, let's just copy that into here just to have it hanging around, you know. Just waiting. And uh, S trace. So S trace help. I just like give it the program to execute. Come on now. Too much output. S trace. Uh. Program, okay. First of all, let's just try it and see what happens. Okay, so this is pretty useful, I think. Uh, looks like it's stepping into some memory it shouldn't be stepping into. Uh, you know, I, I wonder, because it's got this V8 context snapshot. That's probably just the, uh, the heap of the V8 instance, but I wonder if there's any of the other dependencies it's pulling locally that have things missing. So uh, let's do a little LDD again on uh, Discord. And let's take a look at any uh, local file paths that it's, it's pulling from. So lib ffmpeg is pulling from that. Anything else? And then what I'm gonna do next for lib ffmpeg is run LDD on that too. Uh, okay, that has everything it needs, it seems. So, that's a bust. Anything else in here? Chrome sandbox. Don't think I need that. It doesn't seem to be using these uh, EGL and uh, libgles unless those are being loaded dynamically at runtime and they're not linked, which is possible. Uh, let's take a look at that. So is there a way that I can tell let me see uh, i think that uh lior said follow forks or o to write into a file the trace so there is there a way to s trace um trace library loads ah uh, ld debug 
Okay. So let's try this actually and see if we can get a, a read on whether something is being loaded dynamically and has uh, issues accessing another library. Symbol lookup error, that's probably nothing. Okay, un maybe it is something actually. Undefined symbol local time. Where is that coming from? Yes, any .so is loaded dynamically at runtime. That's true, but you can also, <clears throat> excuse me, you can also ask for a particular library to be loaded that isn't actually linked to the program. I don't know if it's happening. Sometimes it happens with um, OpenGL libraries because you'll have like a wrapper, like what's it called, Vlad, that will dynamically load a particular OpenGL um, binary. LD preload, maybe. And uh, it's a C extension. Uh, why is it not finding it? I don't understand why that would be a problem. Is that enough of an error to crash the program though? You know, eh. NSPR use zone allocator. That sounds like from NSS, doesn't it? Or is it something else? Find the libraries containing these symbols to fix the issue. Sure. Which ones are they? Um, let's see. Local gen, really? Also a good idea. So uh, Discord. Whoa, why are we not typing? Come on. <laughs> yes. As usual, with Electron apps, you don't even get to the program code by the time the program crashes because it's got all the uh, native side bootstrapping it has to deal with. Um, so Thomas says uh, the other result for fail to get crashed up ID was mentioning running local gen. Do I even have that? No. And is that on? Is that like an Ubuntu type? Oh, is it dash locale dash gen? Okay, that's not here. What about? No. Okay. So back to looking at the uh, missing symbols. The whole use zone allocator thing. So where does that come from? Where does it supposed to come from? Interesting that I don't get like a direct link to, oh, this is a Chrome thing. Maybe, NSS. So it seems to have the dependency of NSS uh, in its source. Ah, no. Maybe I need to do uh, LD library path. Well, LD library path is never even set to start with, I think. Ah, good question. I thought that we looked at it and it was empty, but let me let me check. That's a good point. Let's try that. So let's check uh, whether LD library path has anything, because I think it didn't. 
No, yeah, it's, it's empty by default in this profile. LDDR resolves recursively. Let's give that a shot. I'm going to go and just grab this little snippet again, paste it. All right, so LDD-R Discord. Okay, same, same result. It's fine. Okay, uh, yeah, the recursive seems fine. Um, hmm. Why is it that this doesn't show anything? Where does this come from? Web engine. Ah, is this the same thing we just saw before? Relative or related to it, I guess. Yeah. No, there's no history for searches, is there? I'm not gonna spend much more time on this. I'm just sort of curious about what library that should be coming from. Symbol not found, is this a commit? Okay. Hmm. That doesn't tell me anything. <laughs> Can't have anything to do with Python 3. Okay. Um, nope. Lib NSPR. What is that? Okay. What about... Uh, looking in, uh, lib slash NSS, lib, uh, NSP, nope, lib NSPR, okay, lib NSPR4, so the question then becomes, what is missing, lib NSPR, okay, it's there, it found it, it's looking for four, that should be fine. <laughs> so, um, weird. Why can't it actually resolve that symbol then? So the way that I got that was uh, LD debug, right? LD debug equals true discord. Oh, what did I do wrong? Do I still, oops, do I still have it in my buffer, I wonder? Holy crap. I lost my uh, OBS. One second. Focus monitor one. Why is it not showing me OBS anymore? That's fun. I do this. There we are, okay, got it back. Oh, that's right, thank you, uh, Rifu, it's libs, and also uh, Kark. Any dependencies uh, file, oh, oh, good point, good point. So um, back into the V term, it is uh, LD debug, LD debug uh, libs. Let me put that in the show notes too, because that might be interesting to someone. Um, LD debug libs discord. And uh, let's just take a look at the output one more time. So undefined symbols, and it says fatal right there, right? That one says fatal. And also the local time ones, they both say fatal. I don't know what this whole zygote thing is about. So electron uh, zygote. Disable zygote on Linux. Use a zygote process to fork child processes. Can I not do that? An electron application. Hmm. 
process model. Man, this is so slow to load. Hey, Fade. Uh, Zygote. No, it doesn't mention it. Fine. Ah, okay, this is on the Electron repo. Render command prefix. Eh. VMs within VMs. Not exactly. Neurotransmission, nice to see you. So where is this supposed to be coming from, at least? We can figure out the whole local time thing. I got a feeling that should just be working, shouldn't it? Second result was talking about sandboxing. Maybe you do need the node sandbox. Let's try that, actually. Um, same problem, it seems. Electron... No sandbox. Okay. No sandbox. Didn't seem to help in this case, unfortunately. Unless I did it wrong. Let's uh let's take the LG debug off of it just to see. In case it does have something to do with it. Okay, same thing. Hmm. So this should just be like built-in types, right? Or built-in functions of the C standard library. Lib standard C++, no. Uh, NSPR is the Netscape portable runtime, interesting. Is there a separate package for the C standard library? Is it, that's just glibc, right? Yeah, GNU C library. So why does it not find the function from that? It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, libc. Okay. Hmm. So how about if I just look that up, maybe? I think I did look that up, but we'll do it again. Uh, symbol lookup error. Just throw that in and see what comes up. NSS util. And app image stuff here. So S trace FFE trace equals file. Okay. Well, how about this? Nice. That might be the little trick that we need here. So let's try uh, paste that in and then uh, discord. All right, some abort happening here. Okay, there's some local state file, that's okay. What did I, okay, so access, maybe um, access. Can't be that. ls.config, oops. Discord. Hmm, I have some stuff here, but what if I just delete that folder? Okay. 
Search for syscalls that returned a negative one. Good call. Negative one. Uh, local state. Local state. Singleton cookie. Yeah, those are the ones I just deleted, so that makes sense. Singleton lock. Settings JSON. Uh huh. So it's, it's making some progress, I think, loading the program up. Hmm. Oh. Well, that can't be the problem, though. I mean, it, I don't think it would choke just because it can't call uh, LSB release. It's trying to find the name of the distro, I think. But could it? I don't think that there's... Is there an LSB? Uh, no. Let's see. L... Obviously not, but LS, hey, can I type LSB? This, this cannot be the problem. I'm just, you know, curious. Hey, there's Pavel's uh, website. Ah, okay, that's nice. <laughs> just fake it. I don't know if I can actually edit the bin path, though. No, no. Can't do that. Hold on. LS bin. Or LS AL. Yeah. Seems to be... writable. LS AL slash. Writable. I don't know. Do I want to do this? Ah, uh, all right. Let's let's get back to what we were doing before, because I think we're gonna waste some time on that. Let's just jump back, 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 back until I see that the LSB. Okay. Uh, Dev PTS one. That's interesting. Okay, I'm not seeing anything where it can't read a library that it's looking for. It's all the same stuff over and over. Font config. Fonts. Fonts. It's doing a lot of stuff. Wow. A lot of font activity there. Okay. Looking at some uh, uh, system uh, data files. Proc locales. This is the stuff that we're talking about. Local time zone info. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to be a problem. Hold on. Wait a second. Open at resumed. What does that mean? Is that where it's looking for the file in the uh, load path and it eventually finds it? Unfinished. So we got, let's say about 30 more minutes. Uh, the la look at the last error again at the bottom. Let's run it again. So I'm wondering whether it's worth continuing. Is this the one you were talking about, Max? Or the one where we actually run Discord uh, directly? Oh, yeah, I probably can't paste into the chat. I've got like two different computers uh, on here. If I can scroll up a bit, let's see.
Yeah, at this point is where it says something about the uh, the Futex facility. Whatever that is. And it shouldn't crash as a result of some of these files uh, not being found, like the local state file. I can't imagine that would be a problem. Okay, so. I think some of the um, symbol resolution errors we saw could be the real issue. And I don't know why I can't find them. Yeah, whatever the Futex is. Futex may be a symptom, though. Uh, provides a method for waiting until a certain condition becomes true. Uses a blocking construct, kind of like a, probably a Futex. Yeah, there's some threading and subprocess stuff going on here. So, uh, Judy Dev says, uh, Futex is fast user space mutex. Great. That makes sense. So, let's uh, jump back to what we were doing before with LD Debug. Or L yeah, LD Debug. Symbol lookup error. It really feels like. What if I run that directly? Huh? Hmm. I wish. Okay. This is what we need to do. Actually, this is where S. <coughs> excuse me. S trace is going to be useful. Dash dash. What was it? Type equals zygote. Because it says child process thing. Zygnote. Zygote. Okay. We're, we're hanging. What's going on? Hmm. So is this running currently? Yeah. That, so for some reason it's running and it's chewing up almost 50% process, but um, why is it that it didn't crash that time? All right, let's do this. Uh, LD debug equals libs. Uh, yes. Come on, come on. Uh, same thing, why is it hanging like that? I'm gonna run it like this. Is it waiting? Hmm. Thomas says maybe where it tries to say the crash jump is not a writable directory. I suppose it could be. Probably waiting for the main thread is expecting the current directory to be on the path. I don't know. When you run Discord the first time, it updates itself usually, so maybe that's what's happening just without any GUI. Oh, you know what? That's something we haven't actually done yet. Maybe that's something that we need to look into. Thank you for reminding me about that. Uh, proc, yeah, let's just go kill it here. X. Bye. Okay. So then, um, in the Geeks manual there is something we can use to pass forward the uh display environment variable preserve we need to use this preserve i don't know if it's going to help but uh they're saying basically that um in the container environment oh i wonder if we need network also launches on google chromium in an isolated environment this time sharing network access with the host which Apparently we haven't been doing uh, and preserving a display environment variable, but without sharing the current directory. Interesting. Okay. So then uh, how about we run it? Let's jump back out. We're going to change our geek shell invocation. We're going to do two things. One is we're going to add dash dash network newt work. And then we're going to have a uh, preserve preserve. There we are equals and then 
just we're gonna pull explicitly display. Then we'll see what happens. I mean, obviously I could just set display. Yeah. So echo uh, display. All right, we got that. Now we can try to paste in the LD library, whatever thing. All right. And then Discord. Illegal instruction. Okay, so it started downloading the zip file. We saw the window pop up, right? I'll do it again. It's right up here. Okay, so it's doing something. Um, but then illegal instruction. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes, high five to all of us. All of us who are trying to debug this issue together. This, that's what I like about doing these kind of uh, live figuring things out streams because there's enough smart people that join that we all sort of you know make progress step by step. Okay. Uh, module update available. I'm starting to see things about Discord. I just didn't care to see how it's doing all of its ind uh, individual modules that it's dealing with. Um, OS is up to date. So it got to the point where it downloaded Discord spell check and then it uh, crapped the bed. So what now? I suppose we could try S trace. Maybe GDB. What does illegal instruction even mean? Mm. No, no hints. Some shell process stuff, probably because it's forking. Okay, fine. Ah, you know, you don't have unzip. If that actually causes an illegal instruction, I mean, I suppose it could. It just seems a little unbelievable. Unzip. Whoa. Unzip. Thank you. So let's throw uh, unzip in the mix here. Pop back out, run it again. It says it streams a config to some nested directory in .config. That should be writable. It is writable. Uh, it, it, it's been creating files there already. I don't know if these things are getting wiped every time I run the container, though. It doesn't really matter if it does, but uh, interesting to know what it's doing. Okay, let's jump in and grab our export one more time. Discord. Discord. Okay. Still, uh, when it gets into this, like downloading the Discord spell check, it really gets unhappy. Let's just see if I keep running it. If it. Uh... So, if I just keep running it, it gradually seems to make progress. Don't ask me why. All right, so it's trying to get the Discord voice thing now. So I, I wonder now if uh, these, what do you call them? Uh, modules have native dependencies themselves that uh, now we have to find the uh, dependencies for. So ls um, dot config discord zero modules. Discord voice. Nah. Node modules. Now we're uh, stepping through the gates of Mordor. I don't see anything that looks like a native dependency in this folder. I'm guessing Discord voice is probably um, interacting with APIs that come in the browser. Interesting to see though. Uh, Discord spell check node modules. I don't know what CLD is. Node add on API. I don't like that. Hmm. I'm not going to dig too deeply into that, but maybe, uh, maybe S trace can be helpful again here. If we can see if something is um, not being loaded. 
Did I keep that S trace that I was using before? S. Come on. S. Come on. S trace. Ah. There we are. Thank God. If I didn't save that one before, I need to save it now. So uh, let's go back here. Drop this in. Okay. Now, let's see what it does. Hmm. Could it be related to this somehow? Because it seems to have hanged here. Oh, okay. And it finally wakes up and says legal instruction. So I think this is like some chromium stuff going on here, like a C group, like a process group, I think, for chromium. They're setting their own uh, process parameters. I'm just guessing here. I don't know, know for sure. But because it says chrome, I'm guessing that chromium, the chromium backend is doing that. Okay. Illegal instruction. Uh, hmm. So Linux, illegal instruction. That must actually be coming from the kernel. Office of Research Computing. I keep getting illegal instruction errors. What do I do? This seems like the wrong place to ask that question. Interesting. So the binary was compiled with an instruction <laughs> that doesn't run on my system. That doesn't make any sense though, because it's as x86 64 so anyway let me check what people are saying in the chat because there's some things i missed here um all right neurotransmission is talking about the install.json file maybe language detection for js thank you uh something compiled for a wrong cpu architecture or flavor uh lior says maybe jit corruption that's interesting hadn't thought about that AVX, maybe. Okay. Um, okay, run. Oh, disassemble. That'll be pretty hilarious. Let's see what that does. GDB uh, Discord. All right, so BT. No function contains program counter for selected frame. Do I need to go up one frame or something? Or is it just because it doesn't understand what's going on anymore that it has lost all context? I didn't see the uh, the UI pop up either, but maybe it's because we've gotten to the point where that doesn't happen anymore. So what if I say Discord? Yeah, I think... Oh. What in the hell is happening? Okay, so it finally finishes module installations. Okay, optional module test RPC was not included. Wow. X window system error. Yeah, just continually executing it seems to get results. I don't know why. But obviously, this is not something that a person can uh, depend on. But, you know, I picked probably the, one of the hardest programs to, uh, to do this with. So <laughs> it's my fault. I think many other programs that are not based on Electron would be easier. A wind-up boy says, uh, Electron apps are a blight on the world. They definitely make things way more complicated than they need to be, I think. You know, I, uh, I've worked on a few electron apps they have their benefits to developers not necessarily to users but uh yeah i don't think that it's a good platform it's because of the complexity okay um you know i think i see the the icon pop up in the upper right hand corner for a second and then it goes away
failed to retrieve device information. There was something else we saw too that looked like it was a uh, pointer to a problem. All right. Is there a core dump? I don't think so. I think uh, it complains it can't even do that, didn't it say? Failed to get the crash dump ID. Let's actually check the folder. Is there a core? Doesn't look like it. GDB dash core core file? No. I don't think there is one. Unless it's being stored somewhere else. Okay, so we've at least validated to the point. That's a good point. Maybe the container can't access the graphics card? Hmm. I mean, it's, it's getting to X. I think that should be enough, but... Let's check the docs. What else have we got in here for the container? You know... What if I put on Google Chromium in the dependencies list? Just in case, like, for whatever reason, some other stuff that we might need shows up as a result of uh, putting that package in. Just out of curiosity. This may uh, kick off a hellacious download, so I'll kill it if it takes way too long. But anyway, what I was about to say is that at least we validated that it is possible to make progress getting an application to run in the container environment. Um, now, whether it's possible to get a variety of applications to run in this environment is a question, but uh, for some, it might be possible, especially if they're not Electron apps, because it's, there's just so much complexity involved that you can't even debug it to figure out what's going on. You can use ungoogle chromium for the web-based version yeah you could do that anyway but uh it, i would at least want to see what having it installed does what else we got here regarding uh containerization i'm guessing some of the parameters come from okay there's dash dash network here I don't know if you can do it. I think I think emulate FHS requires container because it says when used with a container. I don't think it does anything otherwise, but we'll we'll try it and see. So uh, we need to do our little dance on the export first of all, and then we can see if uh, Discord runs. Still the same. Oh, interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah, it tried to re-download everything because the container got trashed, I think, by the end. But it's interesting that it's having trouble uh, with libgl because that could actually have an impact on it being able to execute. They can't figure out the device info. Maybe it just can't even set up a renderer context. Yeah, so uh, what Hugo says, I believe is true. Uh-oh. Stream die. Okay, is the stream back? I, I think the stream is dropping frames, and uh, we'll see if it gets stable again. Okay, I think I'm, I see uh, OBS green now, so maybe the uh, instability is gone. All right, so then, rebuild cache, uh, expose. What does expose do? File system source from the host system as the read only. File system target. Hmm. I wonder if there's a... Some stuff in dev we need to expose so that it can get access to the video card. Like dev slash video. Shit. 
share. I see. So expose makes uh, a path read only and share makes it writable. So then what is it like slash dev slash video? Hello. Oh, we're in the, we're in the environment right now. So what, what's in dev actually? Whoa, LS dev, nothing. That could explain why it doesn't have access to the video card. Um, LS dev slash V. Yeah, so there's a lot of stuff here. Can I use a um, wildcard, I wonder? What if I say, oh, I guess use slash, slash dev, I guess. Expose uh, equals slash dev. Is that the right way to do that? Okay. Hopefully this doesn't trash my system somehow. Mm okay. Dev slash video star. It says, is Guile an image-based Lisp? I think it has uh, pre-compiled module files. So I don't think it's like an image-based thing. I mean, it may be able to do that too, but. Yeah, it may be more like Python. All right. Um... Video star, no such file directory. That's BS though. So is there docs for the environment or not? Let's go to contents. I want to see about the container. Uh, container. Is there, is there any, um, oh, interesting. Is Geek Shell the only place where that actually shows up? Index. Uh, expose. No. A programming index. No. All right. Doesn't say whether it has the ability, ability to do wildcards. Pass through devices, NVIDIA control, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, but I don't know how to do it with container the correct way, at least. Because whatever I'm passing in as a parameter is not actually uh, working. Oh, wait, hold on. Expose equals source equals target. Maybe that's the problem is that I'm not actually source target S exposes the file system source from the host system as the read only file system target so i don't need target okay so um i don't know which one is the correct device oh you know what video that's actually video that's the wrong thing that's not what i'm actually looking for um Where would that be? I could be totally wrong about this anyway. So there's no Intel. I don't even know what device it's trying to grab. If I go into the environment, does it even give me? Oh, I need to take the exposed thing off. I'm gonna have to bail out in a second here, I think. Just because uh, I think a dinner has arrived. And because we're eating pizza, my daughter's not gonna have much patience <laughs> waiting on it. Which I don't blame her, because it's pizza, after all. Okay. I wanna look at uh, LS Dev and also LS uh, Sys. No. Uh, 
so let's see devices yeah so i915 is the video driver or the device itself i suppose so it seems like the slash sys folder is not actually available what if i do that um try expose sys i don't know if that's gonna make it any better or if it's gonna make it uh, worse let's try it oh 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 Nah, not on NVIDIA. It's all just a plain old, uh, wow. Invalid argument. Why? Is that not root? Probably I can't expose something that's not, um, hmm. Pseudo is probably not going to work either. Nah, let's not do that. Anyway, I think we made a lot of progress. I mean, we at least got to the point where uh, the program boots. With other programs, it might actually be easier to get them to work. Maybe another time we can try another program. But um, all in all, this new parameter, which I will go back and, and point out to you again, this emulate FHS parameter does seem to give a more standard um, environment to Linux programs that have been compiled somewhere else. And it might make it possible for you to get some programs you need to run without having to resort to things like Flatpak or finding a channel that happens to have the program packaged correctly because that can be difficult sometimes. Even the non-Geeks repo doesn't have things like Discord uh, packaged because it's it's difficult. That's probably why it's not packaged because of the, the complexity there. In fact, let's go check. Does non-Geeks have Slack? Because it may just be, you know, a major non-starter. Uh, Slack. I suppose I could have just searched in uh, my Geeks packages. So Slack. I think Zoom just showed up in the repo. But Zoom is a very different program. I don't think it's an electron-based program. Yeah, there's Zoom here. Probably if we had tried Zoom, we would have had um, better luck, I'm guessing. And I'm trying to think if there's any other programs that are not Electron based, but are proprietary that people often try to use on Linux. But so many things are based on Electron now that it's uh, shocking. There's one program that I'm interested in, which is Bitwig Studio, but it works fine in um, Skype, VS Code. VS Code is Electron. Skype may be Electron these days. It did not used to be. Uh, try. Can I download it without like giving my email address? Flatpak Ubuntu. Oh, it's like a .deb file. Great. I think I have D package here, don't I? D package. So if I have, this is going to be a nightmare too because it's a uh, an, an audio program which probably has a ton of libraries that needs to pull in so we're gonna give this a like a one minute two minute try and see what happens just out of curiosity sheer morbid curiosity all right so um d package so can i just unzip it without having to uh help geeks install d package whatever Ardor is great, but I like Bitwig. Bitwig is kind of awesome. GTK? Ah. All right, so D package help. Can I just extract it? Or is this something else and it's not what I expect it to be? Install unpack. There we go. Cool. So then uh, D package. Um, Dash dash unpack. Dash dash unpack. Yes, I know I'm doing it in the Discord folder. I have a reason for that. Uh, downloads uh, Bitwig. Hello. Once again, it put it in the wrong stinking place. Come on now. Save as. Put it in the downloads folder, please. For the love of God. It's the problem with running things that come from flat 
pack also because it will start throwing stuff in very strange folder paths that don't make any sense. Okay, here we go. Uh, downloads Bitwig Studio. Uh, let's unpack it. Super user privilege. Why? There's no way. Unless it's actually unpacking it into uh, <laughs> the uh, root folder. Why would you do that? We're going to use Emacs and see if it can uh, load up the file stuff. Control data. I think this data is what is in, um, can I use Z? No. This is archive. Archive extract. It's just an R package. Yeah. Okay. It's a bad idea letting Emacs take care of this process ah get out saving file come on now stop i didn't ask you to do that anymore all right it's continuing to try and extract this file oh did it do it finally all right gave up thank god so um ar do i have ar great How do I extract? Extract files from the archive. All right, so AR-X downloads Bitwig Studio. What? Is it not a dash? X. Lower, lowercase x, okay. Yeah, my mistake. I can't read today, obviously. Malformed archi <coughs> archive. Maybe I, I uh, destroyed it by um, messing with it in Emacs. Oh, boy. Here. Ah, come on, dude. Yes, kill it. I think I broke it. So let's just delete that. And then <laughs> one more time. One more time. We're going to download this. And then we're going to give up. Put it in, in downloads, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. AR is a static library tool. You are uh, possibly right about that. Ah. All right, there's data.tar.xz. Uh, that's an xz file, right? So that's, uh, it's not a tar gz. Xz, okay. So, um, I don't know how to use xz. Decompress xz dash d data. This is really ridiculous. How long does it take? Tar XFJ. Okay. Nice. Thank you, X message. That's going to take an ungodly amount of time. Um, hold on a second. I just saw this Chrome sandbox. What is in there? Huh. Eh, anyway. All right, anyway, I'm gonna give up on that because I don't have time to try to do another program. So anyway, I hope other people will try this as well and let me know what your results are for various programs if they actually do work without a whole lot of trouble. I will include this manifest file and the commands that we were using to try to debug things in the show notes uh, as soon as it's over with, I'll just uh, commit them and they'll be on the website. And uh, yeah, just curious to know what people 
um, find out by trying it because this could be the beginning of making it really, well, not really easy, but much easier to run just standard off-the-shelf programs in Geeks, which could be really nice if, um, if the experience is a bit smoother so that people don't have to do as much as I just did to make it work because I had to do a lot of stuff. We were doing a lot of debugging here just to see how to make a program run. But if the average person can download a program and then maybe create a container and then run it there without too much hassle, I think that could be a very good thing for uh, for geeks. So kudos to the geeks devs for adding this feature. I think it's a really useful thing. Thank you so much for, uh, for continuing to push toward uh, making it possible for people to run whatever software they want because it's very important for geeks adoption, I think, which I did say in my 10 years of, uh, of geeks talk. If you haven't seen those yet, um, check out the 10 years of geeks. What was it? 10 years geeks. Yeah, this site. So 10 years.geeks.gnu.org. If you go check out the program, um, I have two talks there. The one that I'm referring to specifically is the, what was it? Irresistible, is that what it's called? Yeah, you can check out the video by clicking the little video icon there. And I'm sort of talking about this as one of the problems of Geeks Adoption, which is, it's very difficult to install random programs that you might need and, and use them. So anyway, thank you all so much for being here today and sticking with me while I was fumbling around trying to figure things out. Hopefully that was useful and interesting to you. And like I said, leave a note in the comments if you make some progress trying out either Discord or other programs, because I'd be really interested to hear what people are uh, having, having some luck with. So anyway, I hope you all have a great weekend and thanks so much for being here. And until next time, happy hacking. See ya.